website that starts with uh, ESXi host. So ESXi host, all the ESXi hosts, they have by default one V switch. They have one V switch and that is known as V switch zero and this switch is a standard switch. This switch is a standard switch and inside the switch it has two port groups. Two port group, there is VM network port group and second one management port group. And VM network port group connects, has ports inside where all VMs connect, VM connection. VM connections are on, ports on, VM network port group. Whereas it has ports as well and it is used for management. It is used for management, it has a management port and that management port can perform Four functions. functions, and that is number one, management. I'm, I'm going to say functions. And number one, management. Number two, V motion. I study. And FT. Good. So we have all these. And then management port is also connected to the uplink, to the PLink. It connects to PLink that is known as uplink as well. And management port also has IP address. I'm writing this uh, smaller because I'm just reviewing this information. We, you all have this information in your, uh, in your notes. So here management port, PLink, and then uplink. And then management port also has IP address. And then we talked about uh, in ESXi host in networking STF. SPF. SPF stands for single point of failure. Now single point of failure are those failure that, that can cause your complete network to go down or complete VM to go down. So there are a single point of failure, I think on seven levels, yeah. on seven different levels. And it is starting from physical switch. Physical switch and then PNIC and then management, uh, management port. Research. Management port mm -hmm. and then we have V switch mm -hmm. and there is VNIC. Port group. There is port group and VM network group. Port groups and it's, it's on both VM network port group, management port group. So we did have a lot of discussion about these topics. Now then later on we started uh, working with security. So networking and security. Right, networking and security is right here. So first of all, in order to provide, in order to provide security, uh, what was thought that if we can provide security to a switch, Basically, you're providing security all of the, to all of the VMs. So here you have VMs. In order to provide security to these VMs, you need to provide security to this switch. So this, these three options are to provide security to the switch. Meaning, in other words, let's say we are all VMs sitting here and we are connected to a switch. So if you provide security to this room, basically you're providing security for, these, uh, for this network. So these security three options are for providing security for a switch, for a switch, in which the first one was promiscuous mode. Now let's see, first of all, where is this setting? So in, in legacy, in legacy, it's right here. In legacy, you can go to, in legacy, you can go to a uh, server, and then configuration and within configure configuration you can go to networking and within networking this is switch number one 
and right under this switch number two so you have two switches here now this switch if you go to the properties of this switch first switch right here so you go to host configuration networking and right here in properties when you go here now within properties you can select the switch you can select switch and then go edit and when you do edit now here are the two options so first of all in legacy client as you know do we see a difference in here and, and web client do we see a difference what was the difference on this screen yes. on this screen uh, no. uh, the it, shows the ports it shows the number of ports whereas in web client it shows elastic it shows it's elastic the, the ports can be added and removed automatically so the, the so there are few differences between uh, between using the two. So and what is MTU? Uh, it's the size of the IP packet. Can it be bigger? Yeah. Yes, it can be. What is the name of the bigger packet? Jumbo. Uh, jumbo. Jumbo, jumbo packet. In order to have jumbo packet, is is it just a matter of changing it to jumbo packet? No. No. You have to change the complete infrastructure. But what is the number? What is the size of Jumbo packet? 9,000. It's 9,000. Okay. Now, second one comes security. So, security here, we have three options here. So, these are the three options. Number one, promiscuous mode. Second one, back address changes. Third one, forge transmit. Guys, again, this is a security on a switch. You are providing security on a switch so that people cannot, uh, cannot uh, uh, kind of... Uh, First of all, monitor any ports. So if promiscuous mode is set to reject, I cannot know what's happening in these computers. So let's say I have a network monitoring tool. Uh, if promiscuous mode is on, all ports are protected. We discussed that, right? If promiscuous mode is off, then I can install uh, I can install a networking network monitoring tool on my machine. And then I can see what's happening in your in, in your networks. So we, we discussed about promiscuous mode. Promiscuous mode is set is should be rejected. Promiscuous mode should be rejected because if you set it to accept, then your ports are not protected. Your pro ports are not. But then the next question here is, and the next question goes to the last line on the right. Last line on the right. It is last line on the right, the person sitting on the right. <laughs> and the question is, why would you accept promiscuous mode? Guys, you have two seconds, two seconds, quick, 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 quick. Person sitting on the right, last line on the right. Why would we Huh? For troubleshooting purposes. For troubleshoot. I mean, I should have said my right or your right. Then it would have been more easier. But it was it, it was it, it was really uh, uh, funny to see that both lines are pointing to each other. No, you're right. I, no, you're right. No, you're right. <laughs> okay. So so guys, yes, we we sometimes put on a promiscuous mode just for troubleshooting purposes to check the performance of your network. The other two is MAC address changes. Guys, MAC address changes is very simple. We have a machine, we have a VM. So here I'm going to say uh, MAC address changes. So MAC address changes and forged. Forged transmits. Guys, MAC address changes, MAC address changes is for the outgoing traffic. And force transmit is for incoming traffic. Now, let's say I have a VMs. I have VMs that are connected to the virtual switch. So they are connected to a virtual switch inside a port group here. And all these VMs are connected here. Now, MAC address change is basically is protecting traffic that is going outside your network. So this is, this is where MAC address, if, if the traffic is going outside, now, how is it going outside? From VM, it goes to here to management card, and then it's going outside. So MAC address changes. MAC address security applies to packets going outside, and forge transmit is applied to four to packets coming inside. So right here, so forge transmit would be packets going 
to these VMs. Okay, so this is I'm going to say uh, traffic going out. And this is traffic going inside ESXi host. This is out of ESXi host. So now what is this change? What is this change? Guys, this change is very simple. It's just saying that if this is a legit VM, it should be allowed to send traffic out and, and receive traffic. It's just saying this. So for example, if you are all a legit VMs of this track, you are allowed to receive and, 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 and transmit traffic. It's, it's very simple. Now, so it's just saying that if, if this VM is a right VM, so I would say it's a legit. If it is a legit VM, it should be allowed to use the switch and it can talk to other VM. It can also talk to the outside network. Now, let's see what is this type of setting. Let's say a, a hacker creates a machine. A hacker creates a machine inside here. A hacker creates a machine, which is exactly the same machine as this machine. Now, this machine, let's say this is known as Web1, and this, this machine is also known as Web1. Let's say for some, for some reason, this person who made this machine is able to kind of pause this complete machine. Because if this machine, is, if this person is able to create a machine inside, he has the capabilities of pausing this machine as well. So now there is another machine that is not a legit machine, and and it is exactly with the same name. Now let's say if this is connected to banking website, all outside users they are using this machine and enter their ATM card and pins. Because and at the end they are all getting error message because it's not a legit machine. But what this guy is having, this guy is collecting their all information. So as long as you have the ATM card and pen, they can do anything with your account, right? So in order to stop <laughs> such type of uh, such type of uh, 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 such type of hacking inside the environment. There are two setting MAC address changes and forged transfer. Both are same, but the one is for incoming and one for outgoing traffic. So in this case, what happens is how this checks, it only says that that you that this machine is someone legit for your organization. And how does it know? It knows through the use of MAC address. MAC address, outside MAC address should resemble to inside MAC address. Outside MAC address resemble to inside MAC address. If outside MAC address resemble to inside MAC address, it's fine. It means that it's a legit machine. Now, let me show you what this is. Let me show you what this is. Let's say I want to see a MAC address of RVMs. Let's say, so don't follow me at the moment. Just look at the screen. How do we know these MAC addresses? For example, first of all, if I need to know the MAC address of this VM, I'm just talking about just a VM. So all I need to do, first of all, I need to know where this VM is. So basically this VM, I need to know where is it sitting. It is sitting in my, in my C drive. So it's sitting here. So I'm going to go to my C drive. We all know that we can go to VMs right from here. And my VM is this one and in this all you need to do is go open your vmx file you we know what vmx file is vmx file is the one that has information for all your environment so in this case we we'll right click on it and we'll say just open it with a notepad as soon as you open it with a notepad and here i'm going to look for a word or maybe i can just quickly scroll down and it's right here ethernet address this one. This is the external MAC address. And this MAC address should resemble the MAC address inside the inside Windows. That's what this setting is. All the VMs are getting MAC address from, from the virtual environment. So did we saw the old uh, outside MAC address? Now I'm going to show the inside MAC address. Now inside MAC address is inside the inside the machine. So in, in the same machine. I am going to go inside the machine. So this is my machine inside. 
I would go to, I think if I remember, it is inside the inside the network settings. So we'll go just inside the network setting and here, and you go to properties. Actually, I think it should be right here. Yes, it's right here, this one. So this is inside MAC address, and this should match the MAC address for the outside. So let's write this. So here, the inside MAC address says, what is it? It's 0003.9FCB3F8. And let's match it with the outside MAC address. So outside, it is 0003.9FCB3FB. So it is FB actually, because maybe it's not clear. So whenever a machine is made, automatically the inside and outside MAC address is exactly the same. Now, if someone, if someone reinstalls this OS, then, the, so let's say, uh, if someone reinstalls the OS, they okay. will be able to change the MAC address. They will, I, I can change the MAC address. Let's say, I, re uh, I installed a new machine. And as soon as you install a new machine, it will get a new MAC address. But guys, there are ways inside that you can change this MAC address. You can change this MAC address to this MAC address. It's really easy. It's not difficult. You can change it. And, but the, what, what you cannot change, you cannot change the outside MAC address because you, you don't have access to virtualization environment. Okay? So the, the outside address, which is automatically assigned. So, so what you get? Now, so this is MAC address and force transmit. It just makes sure, it just makes sure, everyone, it just makes sure that the ID that you are carrying is exactly what you are. This is exactly what happened when you go to uh, any place and they say, oh, bring a photo ID. Why do they say bring a photo ID? Because they need to match your face and exactly the same thing. It is just matching the outside and inside MAC address. Okay, now I'll come back to your question. Guys, these two, is this understandable? Inside and outside MAC address. If this is changed, now let's say, let's go back to the setting here. Let's go back to the setting here. And in this, it's saying that this setting is set to accept. So set to accept simply means that all VMs should be able to connect to each other in an outside world, even if their MAC addresses are not, even if their MAC addresses are not, uh, are not correct. I mean, if it's not, if, if it's not uh, uh, clear to you, you can sit here with him. Just bring a chair. Or you can sit over there as well. Uh, you can sit over here as well. No. Okay. So guys here, let's look at this. Let's look at this. So do we know now outside and inside MAC address? Guys, I'll come back to your question. I'll give you one minute to find out uh, the inside, outside MAC address of your vCenter. So open both places, guys. Open both places. One minute, find out inside, outside, inside and outside MAC address. Are they equal? And write it down on your copy. Quick, 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 quick. Seth, Seth, quick, 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 quick. quick. <laughs> So outside MAC address, outside MAC address sits. Uh, 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 Okay. So done, 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 done. MAC address inside, outside MAC address inside, outside MAC address. <laughs> Okay. 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 Okay.
आपने वो जो की हुई है दूसरी दोबारा निकालना पड़ गया तो पूछ लो अच्छी बात है ठीक अच्छी रही है फिर भी बात नहीं पूछी तो ये पांच सौ
Yes, force transmit is exactly the same thing. Force transmit is exactly the same thing. It is just for incoming traffic. Yes, yes. What is the question? Everyone, everyone, please, please, please. Huh? Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Uh huh. And this security doesn't apply to the physical MAC address. Now, secondly, let me say, guys, I can't hear the question, please. Yes. It can be changed if you know how to change it. You need some extra tools, but it can be changed, yes. But is it just added security if we allow it? No, there are tools that can break the MAC address. So it's like hacking into a machine. It's like hacking. You won't change it like this, but it can be changed, yes. It is assigned to physical machine. Huh? Uh, excuse me, guys. I'm having a hard time listening to a question. Please, please, please. Yeah. MAC address is assigned to all machines, physical or virtual, all of them. So MAC address must be assigned to all of them. As soon as you create a VM, a MAC address is assigned. It is a unique address, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, the question here is very important. Question is, since I said MAC address is supposed to be a unique address. MAC address is supposed to be a unique address. But here I'm saying that both addresses are same. So why is it, I mean, it contradicts my previous statement that MAC addresses should be different. But why am I saying that they are same inside and outside? Because they belong to the same machine. They belong to a same machine, so it is unique for this one machine. It's not two MAC addresses, two different machines. It's the same machine. Different, connect, right? Sorry? Connect uh, if they are different, then you cannot connect. Okay. Now, here, guys, everyone, uh, 
so security now within security so this is a security in 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 in, in ESXi host this is a security in ESXi host guys here we now need to understand what is VDS vSphere distributed switch so now as we started with this as we started with networking everyone it's a new concept for everyone so it is uh, please uh, understand the concept the concept is VDS now VDS uh, this concept comes from uh, networking so in networking in ESXi host so in ESXi networking and in order to manage networking in ESXi host guys let's understand this let's understand this in order to understand networking in order to understand networking in order to understand networking we need to understand switches inside the inside the ESXi host so here there are switches SWITCH there are switches inside and switches are of two types there is something called a standard switch and there is something called VDS so so far what we have learned it's all about standard switch so everything that we have seen this switch is a standard switch VDS doesn't exist at the moment so standard switch So VDS the switch where we can manage all those switches? All multiple switches at, the, at one time, yes. So here one more time, where are we now? We are trying to understand VDS and VDS stands for vSphere distributed switch. vSphere distributed switch. Now vSphere distributed switch, what is the other type of switch available? It's called a standard switch. So the other type of switch is just a standard switch and standard switch comes automatically in all ESXi host and we can create more switches based on our requirement. Now standard switch or distributed, distributed switch both have exactly the same components. Both have exactly the same components. So here I'm going to make both switches. So standard switch is something like this. A standard switch is a switch that has code groups inside and then port groups have ports inside right so this is a standard switch we already know a standard switch right we already know a standard, a standard switch a standard switch is a is a normal switch that is known as v switch zero and then you create a second switch third switch fourth switch fifth switch guys in total we can create 256 switches in one host Total maximum number of switches that you can create in one ESXi host is 256. You can create 256 switches if you need. Now here this switch has port groups. So we all know they are port group and port groups are of two types which is a VM port group and the second one is management port group. Guys, exactly in the same manner distributed switch has no, uh, no additional things. Distributed switch is also the same thing as, so in distributed switch, you have, we create a switch and it also has port groups and ports. Same thing, exactly the same thing. So here, this is known as VDS, we call it VDS1, VDS0, and then inside you will have uh, port groups. Now, in VDS, when you create port groups, this is known as distributed port group. Sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, one more time. Guys, today we are learning a topic that is known as vSphere distributed switch. Now, what is the main function of a switch to connect different VMs together, right? So, so far we know that in ESXi host, when you're managing networking, there are switches inside. So, we know all about a standard switch. So standard switch, when you manage standard switch, it is a standard switch. There are port groups inside and port groups have ports inside. Guys, exactly in the same manner, we can also create a VDS, vSphere distributed switch. And vSphere distributed switch is not different from standard switch. Same components are present in vSphere distributed switch. 
So now I'm comparing those components. So when you create a new BDS, when you create a new BDS and you would see it right here guys, look at this. So right here it says vSphere standard switch and on this side it says vSphere distributed switch. If you select vSphere distributed switch, there is nothing inside this, this place. So vSphere st standard switch is here, right beside vSphere it is vSphere distributed switch. So distributed switch doesn't even exist to start with. If you need it, then you, then you create it. But if we create it, guys, it has exactly the same components. It has port groups. It has port groups. It has ports inside. And 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 then it's it's just a switch. It's just a switch. Yes. So you're you you have selected host, and then you're in configuration, and then you're in networking, and then you can see we we see a standard switch. And this is not here. No. This option is not here. Uh, are you connecting to V Center or directly to a host? It won't show. Yes, it won't show when you directly connect it to a ESXi. So this top line is IP address. Is the host or V Center? If the host. So when you directly connect to a host, guys, we with distributed switch doesn't exist. So first of all, we need to understand that. On component level, there is no difference. On which level? Component, component level. level, there is no difference. On component level, there is no difference. We, BDS is exactly the same thing. It has port groups. It has ports. Now we need to understand what is the need of BDS. Guys, the need of BDS is that if you have, if you have, let's say, 400 hosts to manage, so let's say these are your 400 ESXi hosts. And in all 400 ESXi hosts, I need to do a exactly same standard switch configuration. Instead so, one by one. so instead of doing one by one, I can just create one BDS, and this will this will configure all of the ESXi hosts in one shot. So the purpose of BDS is this: I have how many ESXi hosts, guys? 400, 400 ESXi hosts, and if I need to do exactly the same setting with all of them. Exactly the same setting. So this is so. So first of all, you might think. Who might think? You. Might. You might think. You. you would. You would. You think? Yes. Yes. Guys, you might think to start with all standard switch are exactly the same. What, what type of setting would we need to do different on all of them? So here I have how many host? Four hundred mm -hmm. host, and all of them have V switch zero, right? So V switch zero, and all of them, and all of them by default has two port groups. So all of them has VM network port group and a management port group. Is this understandable, guys? Yes. Yeah. Is this understandable, guys? I can hear everyone, guys. Yes. 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 Okay. So I have 400 hosts. They all they all have exactly the same setting. Now listen carefully. Now on 400 hosts, I received an email from security team saying that on in all of your environment, promiscuous mode should be accepted and forged transmit should be rejected. I'm just giving you an example of change that you need to do in all of them. Okay, so you need to do promiscuous mode. Promiscuous mode is set to be rejected by default. So which means that you need to do the setting on all of the, on uh, all switches. And second setting that forged transmit needs to be rejected, which is accepted by default. And one more thing they are saying, to add a new port group, add a new port group, New new port group and the port group name will be production prod. So now let's say you need to do these three settings <laughs> on all ESXi hosts. Guys, do you think there is a chance that we can make a typo here? We can make a human mistake here. Yes. There is a chance because if this this would have been just four hosts, you can just do them on four hosts. But when you're doing it on 400 hosts, guys, definitely, definitely, there is a chance that you might miss any one of them. And I've given you an example of just three changes. Let's say there are not three, there are 20 changes that you need to do in all of them. Guys, this is where VDS comes into play. All you need to do, do we understand this example? Example is 400 hosts, and I need to do all these changes here. So in order to make these changes, all you need to do is bring a VDS, bring up, create a new VDS, and within VDS, do the changes 
do the changes, do the three changes, one, two, three, and then apply it to all of your host automatically. So VDS, all changes that are applied, they will be applied on all hosts at one time. So this is the main purpose of VDS. Now, based on this quick explanation, let's write one liner for VDS. VDS, and, and first of all, let's, let's write, okay, so what is VDS? It is, it is used to manage multiple ESXi host networks, network switch configurations, from one place. So VDS, it is used, it is used to manage multiple ESXi host network switch configuration from one place. From, from one place. So it is used to manage, so this is one definition and you can visualize this and remember this. 400 hosts, you need to do exactly the same configuration, yes, you can do it. You don't need a VDS, but then you have to do, when you have to do frequent changes, maybe you need to add port groups. You need to remove port groups. You need to add more ports. You need to remove ports from there. You need to add physical adopters and all those changes, then it is a bit tedious to do all the changes in all of the hosts. So in that, we can use a VDS. Now, requirement of VDS, requirement. So requirement, VDS requirement. VDS requirement is this, guys. Number one, number one, for VDS, it's a paid, it's a paid option. It doesn't come for free. It's a paid option. Uh, uh, actually, so first one, number one, vCenter is required. vCenter is required. Meaning, if your environment does not have vCenter, you cannot use VDS. And V and V Center is it a free product? No. no, it's not a free product. You have to buy this product. Nobody's using internet. Anyone is using internet? There is a five dollar reward for anybody who tells us that if anybody is using internet. Okay, five dollars is less. Uh, Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. And the person will be charged forty dollars. Okay. Sorry. Network switch, yeah. Which one? Which one? Presentation. Uh huh. Yes. Multiple ESXi host network switch. Yes, hosts. Okay, so I'll put it as hosts network switch from one place. You just create one VDS, and here, so let's take an example of all these are hosts. I'm going to create one VDS here. So this is my VDS, let's say. And I am going to co configure all everything here. And then I'm going to attach it to all of the hosts. And in a few minutes, the same configuration will be on this host, and this host, and this host, and all of the hosts. Just like GP. Um, just we'll make, like a policy. Yeah, we'll make a policy. And, and it will be applied to all of yeah. them. It is, yes, you can think of this as a GPO as well. When you apply a GPO, it will be attached to all of the machines. So VDS settings, networking settings. Question? Yes. Um, is it an add-on on top of center? Yes, it's an add-on. It's an add-on. Yeah. And so in vCenter, it can be created, but we must create it. It's not there by default. We use it. It, it is used. Everywhere it is used. Again, again, one more time. No, not really. They might have different settings as well, but maybe that one, that these, these three settings could be same on all of them. So it depends. It depends. There are 400 hosts. Some hosts are sitting in Montreal. Some in, they might have their own setting, but these three settings should be same on all of them. 
Yes, they have to be same on all of them. It depends on the requirement. It depends on the requirement. So maybe your it depends on your networking team saying no, the first two changes goes on to 200 switches and next two changes goes on to other switches. No, then you have to create two VDS. Then you need to create two. Guys, it's a very important question. Let's say you need to do three changes on 400 hosts or let's say you need to do these changes on 300 hosts and this change in on 100 hosts. In this case, we create two VDS. So one VDS with two changes, another VDS for one change. So yes, so when you need to, when you defer from different different type of or different changes, then you need to create multiple VDS. Okay, one more time. VDS is used to manage multiple ESXi hosts, network switches, configuration from one place, from one place, and then the requirement for VDS is one, which is you must have a vCenter. If you don't have a vCenter, guys, VDS won't work. Secondly, secondly, VDS is not available on, on, uh, on a standalone host. VDS is not available on just a host that is not part of vCenter. So VDS is not available on... I would say standalone host. Standalone host is not a name. It's just for understanding. It's not available on ESXi host that is not in vCenter. So just two requirement. And the third one, how does it work? So how VDS work. Guys, in order to work with VDS, in order to work with VDS, all you need to do in a vCenter, create a VDS. So there are basically just three steps. So there are three steps. So number one, uh, which one? Question? Connect through, connect to vCenter. Connect to vCenter. So in order to work, all you need to do, log into vCenter, log into vCenter, <clears throat> number one, log into vCenter, number one, log into vCenter, secondly, create a VTS. Create a VDS and number three, attach ESXi host to VDS. Attach. Okay, no, hold on. Uh, make required net switch configuration on VDS. Make required switch. on VDS. So make require make require switch configuration of VDS and last part add VDS actually add ESXi host Make required switch configurations on VDS. So we need to do these three configurations on VDS. Okay. And the last one is add required ESXi host to VDS. That's it. Guys, this is exactly like you do group policies. So group policies can be assigned in three ways. Remember, you need to create a group policy, assign setting, and then get. Remember, this is exactly the same thing. You need to create a VDS, do the configuration, and connect it to the host. That's it. So you would 
create a VDS. So in other words, here, you create a VDS, number one, then you did all the configuration, number two, and then add it to the host. That's it done. I did one by one. Uh, you can add one by one to all the, all the hosts. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how it is. Yes. So three things to remember. Three things to remember. Number one. Number one. Number one. Create a VDS. Secondly. Yes, 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 that's, that, that's it. This is just for understanding. You just need to do three things. Yes. Guys, if you can create a VDS, please. It is not removed. It's just that V center is not working. Your web client is working. If it doesn't show you anything, it's just that B center is not working. So make sure go to services and make sure if there is open host and cluster on this. This is empty, this is just B center is not working. Restart services. Restart services or restart the host. It's just B center is not able to either connect to the database or it's not working. Good. Guys, you all should be able to create a VDS. Use your logical knowledge. Use uh, Google. I'll give you five, three minutes to create a VDS, guys. So. But in, in, in some 
से क्लिक करें इन्वेंट्री कोई क्लिक करिए ऊपर से इन्वेंट्री ये से क्लिक करें ना नीचे आते जाए इसको इसको क्लिक कर दो ये होम पे जाओ नहीं ऐसे इधर से नहीं डेटा सेंटर को क्लिक करो नहीं उसपे निकाले ना हमने निकाल लिया show you how to work with vds and quickly just a quick reviewer what is vds uh, vds is uh, vds is, is it is known as vcr distributed switch and vds where distributed switch is used to is used to manage multiple esxi host networking from one place one day now i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to give you a tip that you need to remember it's a tip that comes with experience you must remember it it's uh, and and people out there they have a general confusion about this so guys everyone 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 it's a very very important tip about vds guys vds most of the people most of the people how many type of the people most most type of the people most of the people think that when you create and configure vds when you create and configure vds it will go and make changes to vswitch 0 most of the people think that when you create a vds it will go and make changes to vswitch 0 which is a wrong understanding guys the right understanding is that when you create a vds and you you do the settings so first of all how do you do vds setting first of all create a vds make the changes and then add to the host just three things you need to remember but once you do now this is a very important point to remember once you do here guys once you do once you do what happens is it creates a hidden switch inside your uh, inside your esxi host everyone it creates a hidden switch like this 
So meaning VDS related configuration sits in a separate switch, not in V switch zero. V switch zero remain will remain the same as is, but what happens is that there it will be a second switch created which has the VDS array. So if somebody asks you outside that I created a VDS, but I don't see any changes in my V switch zero, that VDS is not going to touch any existing switches. What it does, it creates another switch that is a hidden switch. You won't see it in in, in, in the switch, but the settings are there. Question? Question? Sir, so why they consider it's the three switches? No, no, it creates a hidden switch, but there is a setting where you can see the switch. But if you won't find it in standard switches. So it won't be in a standard switch, it will be here on this side, in v, v, VDS, on, on, on VDS side. So this is vSphere distributed switch. So, so wrong understanding is that V switch, that VDS would make changes to vSwitch 0 or vSwitch 1 or vSwitch 2, no. It creates its own switch and manages that switch, yes. So when we do this, uh, the example you have given, we have to promiscuous mode uh, accepted and uh, create a new port. On. It will uh, done all these things in the, this hidden switch. This is all in this switch, yes. They, this is not applied but to that will be zero. the same. Huh? And how can? Uh, and then how can? Guys, that's a very good question. It is a very good question. The question is this. The very good question is this. That. That let's see. Let's see here. You applied promiscuous mode and all the three important settings here. You apply the important three settings here, right? And then it creates another switch. But all your VMs are connected to V switch zero. Yeah. How would v VDS settings would apply to existing VMs? Guys, question, do we understand the question? The question is that all these VMs inside, they are already connected to the v, to v switch zero. And whereas the VDS changes apply to this new switch, how would these changes apply to these other VMs? So guys, the answer to this is that these VMs must be, will, will, will change it from this switch and now we're going we're gonna to connect them to a VDS. No, just once, just once we need to connect them. Just in the beginning when you create a new VDS, we, we need to connect these VMs to VDS switch and then all changes will be applied to all VMs. And then there will be... It is right here. It's right here. So it's, it's, it's hidden meaning. It's not in standard switch, but you can still see it here. You can still see it here within VDS. In standard switch, we will see no VM. So in standard switch, you won't have any VM. So all your VMs will be connected to VDS switch. And it will be the user. Huh? Yes, most of the time we don't use V switch zero. Most of the time we don't, it will sit there, we don't use it. So it's not hidden anymore, like we can go and see the switch, right? Yes, so hidden means that you won't find them in V switch, V standard switch. It will be in VDS. Yes. So, so what if some have to be handled? Just once, just once. Because once you do it in the beginning of the year, then you just keep on making changes. So it's just once. So in most of the places, this is, this is how it is. Now, guys, I'm going to create a VDS in both of them. Yes. You will deploy another VDS and then make sure that all VMs are there too. Okay. So, guys, here, here I'm going to go and create a VDS. So, first of all, we need to go to home. We need to go to home. And within home, we need to go to networking. And I'm doing it in legacy client first. And within networking, all we need to do here, once you expand, basically it shows you everything in the network. So in this, all you need to do is right click on your data center. And here I'm gonna say, create a new distrib V distributed switch. So once you go create a new V distributed switch, it, it now it asks you, that which version of VDS do you want to create? You want to create a version of 4, 4.1, 5.0, 5.1, 5.5, and now in the latest, if you are using 6, it will give you a 6 version as well. Guys, the reason they are giving you all these options, because in some places you might have a mixed environment. There might be some older servers and newer servers as well, so you need to know which version is it.
So in our case, we're going to we're going to go with 5.5. So then you go next and within next you need to name it. So basically this is a V V D switch switch. You can name it anything. Maybe this is uh, uh, you can say VDS uh, VDS switch and VDS switch from change one two three four five. Uh, now, why did I say change one two three four five? Guys, in this I just want to show I just want to show other VMware admins that why am I creating this VDS switch? Maybe this VDS switch is based on somebody requested some VDS changes and this change number gives them the option they can go into the documentation and see that who requested these changes and why this VDS is required. It's all up to you. You can leave the name as is or change the name. It's all fine. So then next, secondly, you're saying that how many uplink ports will be there? So there, there are four ports. Let's say you want to increase the ports or you want to reduce the port. There is only one uplink port. Or you can say there are four uplink ports. Uplink ports are it's just saying that how many, how many network cards will be attached to this VDS? How many network cards? So we're going to leave it as is and then move next. And right here it's saying now same thing guys. We did this three. You create a VDS and then you assign setting, then you add, then you add a host. Here it's just saying you create a VDS and add host and then you do the changes later. It's just that. Here, I, this is just simplicity. I just gave you this in, in so front. Let's say if we have a 200 host in, so we then, have to click all of those? Yes, you, you must click all of them or you must click all of them or you can say I can do it later. You can say uh, I'm not adding any host at the moment. And guys, your safe option is go to option number two, add later. You don't want to add, because if you add it now, this switch will be connected to all the hosts at the same time. So what we do, we do it later. Uh, but here, I'm going to do it now. So I'm going to do it now, here. Now here it's saying, when, when, when do you want to add hosts and their physical adopters to the new VDS? Guys, in VDS, it is very, very important. In VDS, it is very, very important that you must have extra network cards on each host. Now, let, let's see this. Let's say I have two hosts here, and I have only one, one network card. I have one network card, and that one network card is already connected to your vSwitch 0. Guys, when we are trying to have a new VDS, you must have some extra cards sitting here so that this extra card will be used with the VDS switch. So this extra card will be given to VDS switch. So if you do not have extra card guys, then meaning on this host, it cannot go outside. So, and do we remember? Do we remember? We don't remember. Do we remember that one card can only be assigned to one switch? So if you have only one card that is already assigned to V switch zero, you must have an additional card that must be assigned to a VDS. This is what this is saying. It's saying that okay on your on your 50 on your 50 I don't see any extra card meaning host number 50 will be added but there is no uplink connected to it so I must go to 50 back and then and then free up one of the network card do we understand the fact here so this is why here it's not giving me anything and here it gives me saying on your second host you do have three free network cards so I'm gonna say just connect one. Net. And why do why why don't I see any network card on 50? The reason is because in the last class we used it for for the for another example. We created two switches and we assigned two network cards to one switch and the other two network cards to other switch. So all we need to do later for now we'll just leave it as is. All we need to do either take one card from one of the switch or add a new card. Add a new card. Guys, this is exactly, remember this, remember this, let's say, let's say, if I assign a VDS to this room, let's say this, this complete room is a ESXi host, and there is a switch, and there is one door, that one door is only connected to vSwitch 0, and once the new switch comes, it has no other exit to go, so that's what it is, you need to have a separate network card attached to a VDS, and that is known as the uplink. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add the host here, but there is no network card, separate network card available. We can add it later. 
but you must remember that it VDS won't work properly on your 50. Why? Because there is no outside door attached to that. Let's say if you have so, excellent question, guys. Let's say I have 400 servers and we don't have extra network cards, which means, guys, you must plan and design in advance. We don't. We just don't go. Oh, I have to install VDS and let's do it. No, it's not like it. It you need to have that proper planning, designing. Make sure all requirements are done. Make sure all configurations are done and everything, then we go move forward with this. If some hosts are not fulfilling the requirement, you won't waste time on them and then and then do it. So working with VDS guys can be very easy. It is that easy to today. And it can be very, very dangerous. Why? Because you now you're playing with networking of hundreds of hosts at the same time. So it can be very dangerous as well. My advice to everyone, my advice to everyone, in any environment when you go to, and when they ask you to make any change in your brain, 10, how many, uh, think how many times? 10 times. 10 times before making a change. Okay? Yeah. Or you can see Linux videos. Or you can, unfortunately, the real environment won't be in Kenneth's video. Guys, what I'm saying, so think 10 times when somebody wants you to do something in your brain, guys, do not tell them, I'm thinking 10 times. <laughs> oh, you are? Okay. <laughs> Every time when you do, you think 10 times, okay, we're going to fire you. Uh, yes, so here's the thing. In the world that we are living in, if you tell your weakness to someone, they take advantage. You don't want to tell your weakness. To, this is just a very simple thing. Uh, yes, I am thinking 10 times, but guys, for VDS, think 100 times. So that's the comparison I wanted to give you. Uh, in all normal things, think 10 times. And then, and, and what is the, so guys here, one, one thing, one thing, one thing. So what is 10 times thinking? What is 10 times thinking? How, how can you do 10 times? Guys, what I do even to date now in my current project, to date now, what I do, everything, each and every task that is given to me, I, I will test it in my test environment. I won't tell this to my manager. I won't tell it to anyone. I would just buy time and ask them, you know what, this task can be done. Just give me some time. I'm, I'm, I'm busy with some other stuff. So always do everything. This 10 time thinking simply means test the thing in your test environment. And where is the test environment? Guys, sometime in some companies, there is no test environment. So this is why these machines will help you throughout your career. So these machines are powerful enough in which you can make any environment. All you need to do, let's say somebody is saying, you know what, uh, we motion this machine from here to here. I mean, you don't have to think 10 times all the time. Maybe it's just the first time when you're doing one task. When you're experienced, then you can just go and do the change. But just like I'm saying, I, I just to be on the same safe side, I test everything, each and everything. So changing rate configuration, Test it in, in your test lab. Uh, changing disk size, change it, it's a test in your test lab. Disabling account, even to, for that, guys, for that, you will have your Active Directory all environment ready in these machines. This is why these machines will help you throughout your career, guys. I have many, many students who are following this strategy and, and few students who are not following this strategy. They had to pay, pay a big price. What was the big price? They were laid off. Because they made a mistake while doing, and mistakes happen. But, but guys, if you do a very stupid mistake, sorry about the word, S-T-U-P-D-I, <laughs> the wrong spelling, this is why I said it the first time. Um, very, very silly mistake caused machines to be restarted, uh, 500 machines to be restarted in SCCM. A very silly mistake, uh, CEO now is not able to log in. Now, I'm not... I'm not scaring you here, guys, because without taking risk, you can't do anything. You, you must be ready to take risk. You must be ready to do anything. But I'm just saying, just test it in your test environment. So in the first two weeks when you join any organization, I would, first of all, try to understand this environment. For example, you joined here in, in Evergreen. In the first two weeks, it will take time for you to create IDs. So in the first two weeks, try to understand their environment as much as possible. Ask your manager or ask your team lead who you are working with, 
that if you have any sort of diagrams, give it to me. Any sort of do documentation, give it to me. And they will give it to you. Because this is documentation is different. So in these two weeks, I'll try. I'll what? Try. try. I'll try to replicate that network, maybe not the complete network, but in my machine. I will create an Active Directory in my test environment. I will create DNS in my test environment. I will create VMware in my test environment, whatever version they are working with, without telling them in my own personal machine. Guys, sometimes they won't allow your personal machine in, in companies. So you do it at home. You should have your environment at home. So that kind of every day, every day you are, you're, you're learning and moving on. So 10 times mean test it in your environment. With VDS, how many times you need to think? 100. 100. VDS is 100 because each VDS might be working with 50 hosts or maybe 40 hosts or maybe 100 hosts. Yes. Everything. Each and everything. Each and everything. Yes. So guys, each and everything in production needs approval. Account disable enable need approval. Add new the hard drive need a, each and everything needs approval. You're not doing anything without approval. So no 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 no. So that is that is called a change management system. And later on, I'm going to give you a, a, a overview of change management system. Uh, we we do change management on daily basis on daily basis. And and Amin can also share some real example because he is doing changes every night. He's doing changes. He can show it to you as well. Um, I'm, I'm not working on changes nowadays, I'm working on projects. So the change, but you'll be working with changes in all organizations, but try to give you a simulation. So guys here, I'm creating a VDS. VDS can be created in three steps. How many steps? Three steps. Three steps. And those three steps are number one, create a VDS. So number one is? I can't hear everyone guys. Create a VDS. Second one, make changes to the switch. And third one? Add host to the media. Simple as, simple as uh, GPO. Create a GPO, assign setting, and link it. Remember? And there was another thing we, we learned uh, almost similar to this. What was similar to three in, steps? Uh, no, in, uh, in, in Citrix. In we Citrix. Have, we have what was it? Deploy, uh, sorry, create uh, the. Create the application, deploy it, and then. Create application, distribute, distribute and, 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 and deploy it. This distribute and deploy it. Okay. So there are a few things that we need to guys. Uh, when we create summaries, guys, when we create summaries, please look at the whiteboards and make your mind maps here, guys. This is gold. This is gold. You'll you will. It, this will be very very easier to remember things. Okay. I'm creating a VDS. I'm creating a VDS. And in order to create a VDS, I'll go to the next step. And here it gives me a warning. And that warning is very simple. The warning is just saying that your host number one has no uplink adopter. So later on, you must create a uplink adopter. This, this warning is just that. So I'm going to say yes, it's fine. And then here, it gives you automatically created default port group. So it created a default port group, which is known as a DB port group. So here I said, that when you create a new, when a new port group is created, it's known as DB port group. DB. So in a standard switch, it's just known as a port group. In a VDS, it's known as a DV port group. Now at this point, we don't have to do anything. And all you need to do, you go to next, finish, and now, and keep an eye on this recent task here right at the end, and it will show you the progress. As soon as it is done, it will create a VDS and will attach it to both hosts. So, how do we verify this? All you need to verify, once it is all done, you need to go back. So, here is my VDS. It is still in progress. I can go back to home. So, go back to home and go to hosts and clusters. And within hosts and cluster, you need to go to configuration and go to networking and in VDS. Now, in VDS, you do see a switch. But since it is still in progress, it is still being created. It is still being created. So, and you should see that on both hosts. So you should be able to see that in both hosts. So here it's saying, as you can see, it is creating port groups here. So it is doing the next step in progress and you will see a new port group here. And you should be able to see the same switch on 55 as well. Okay.
So just go to just go to the host, go to configuration, go to configuration, and then go to networking, and then within networking go to VDS. Now now let's verify that from the web client. Let's verify it from the web client. Yes. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. We have to create it. We have to add that network card. So we'll need to go back to the VDS and select the host and we can add the network card there. So guys here, let's verify it from the web client. So I'm gonna go to the web client now. Let's go to web client. And within web client, we need to go back to uh, networking, manage. It will be appear in, in a minute. It will appear in a few minutes, okay. Otherwise, it, it, I mean, it's not showing here. It's just a matter of, it's just a matter of refreshing the screen. Sorry? It, in web client, it's the same thing. So we go to we go to the home we go to home go to networking and in networking once it is open just select data center and create a VDS. So it's just loading. It's just loading and then we'll, we'll see that
जब जब डिलेट स्टार्ट है ना और आप खुद स्टार्ट करते हैं तो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट होता है और जिसकी वजह से सर्विस बिल्कुल डाल जाता है क्योंकि थोड़ा सा सेशन इन द वर्चुअल एनवायरनमेंट व्हाई बिकॉज़ इन इट इट नीड अ डिले टाइम एंड सेम दिस इज अ कंप्लीट वर्चुअल एनवायरनमेंट मे बी वी सेट इट जस्ट टेकिंग अ बिट मोर टू इट
Now storage in ESXi environment next lecture there will be a test for mind map of networking so complete networking including all the topics and everything just networking just networking but you need to create a mind map so mind map we know that mind map starts from esxi mind map is something you start from here then here then here then here like that so create a mind map of so it's so all from the whiteboards is nothing so you need to create a mind map of uh, of uh, networking and there will be a test you need to write it here in class mind map remember mind map of networking <laughs> And I would highly advise, I would highly advise that you use a software called iMindMap. So which is long weekend? Monday. Monday. Huh? Monday. Are you giving off? Ji, Monday to off. Long weekend. Are you? Tuesday. Tuesday off, nahi hai. असाइनमेंट <laughs> 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 What is the assignment, guys? The assignment is, guys, quick, 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 settle down, settle down, please. I know it's it's really, really cold. No, no, no. Thank you so much, guys. This software, everyone, everyone, everyone. Let's quickly settle down. Is it not getting cold? Kind of inside? No, no. Yeah, not for you guys. Okay, here. Guys, download a software in the weekend. 
everyone in the weekend download a software called i mind map i mind map and then make a mind map of complete networking next month next tuesday there will be a test of networking so networking all the components you need to remember all the components you need to write down them here it's free for 7 days haan ji it's 7 days ke baad free hai acha koi baat nahi aap ye ek kam se kam ye ek to bataye na fir next ko baad mein dekh lenge okay it's a homework it's a homework no it's homework to watch please so everyone chapter number 6 chapter number 6 is about introduction to storage concepts uh, and storage concepts is a very important topic just like networking concepts networking con concept is a very important topic and storage concept is also a very very important topic and in this we need to understand storage in esxi host vsphere 5.5 so we need to understand storage in 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 vsphere 5.5 guys in order to understand storage in order to understand storage what we what we do need to understand that storage is key to virtualization storage is key to clouds storage is key to virtualization so understanding storage in virtualization it is a must it is a must must uh, concept so uh, storage is key to virtualization storage is key to virtualization Now, why storage is key to virtualization, guys? The reason is that all the VMs are sitting in storage. <clears throat> all of the VMs are sitting in storage. Your complete VM, your complete, your 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 complete organization's VM, where thousands of users are connected, all are sitting in a storage. So, for that reason, storage is a very important concept. So, I'm going to make our architecture first that we do have, and then on top of that architecture, we're going to understand storage. So in our current architecture, this is how it looks like. We do have a uh, two ESXi host and one vCenter, and they're all connected. We do have four additional, three additional network cards on each host. So make exactly what we have at the moment. Three network cards. Three extra network cards in this host, and at the same time, this one is our VS and VC. This one is ESXi host, and this one is ESXi host, and this one is ESXi two. Now, a very very common understanding about a storage: all the storage starts from what? A disk. <clears throat> all types of storage starts from a disk. A very simple storage starts from a disk. A very very advanced storage starts from a disk. So we must understand. storage is not a huge big uh, uh, a complex thing but it is a very very important concept guys storage uh, no most of the time storage specialists are different people cuz cuz they uh, they have to go through different certification track but we need to understand storage cuz we we work with storage people so storage the storage admin's responsibility is to install a complete storage and provide it to us so So I'm going to go through all the four types of storage and we have been through four types of storage in our windows classes for for everyone uh, cuz I wanted to have that concept right from the start and now it is the first very important application of a storage and once I start making the mind map here you will remember that we went through this one time before and here we need to understand so guys here this is my environment and all of the storage start from what all storage found this starts from a simple disk basic a basic or simple disk now now that disk 
can be of many different types. That, uh, that, so the first type of disk that we do remember, the very first type of a disk that we do remember is the internal local disk of a computer. It's an internal local disk of a computer. So once these are computers, they all have a local disk. So we are going to say that these all computers have local disk. Now to start with, yes, we did install we did install operating system, but before even installing operating system, everyone, before even installing operating system, everyone, they had a disk. Now, disk, do you think that disks are always ready to write to be written on them? No. No? Disks are not ready to be written on them. So, what are those disks called that are not ready to be written? Are raw disks. Raw disk. So, all of the computers, guys, here, you buy a new computer and it comes with a disk inside. And this disk yes, to start with is a raw disk. Now, a raw disk cannot be written anything. You cannot write anything on them until we format, format them. Until we format them. Now, as soon as you format them, then it becomes a certain type of disk. Now, if that format is done through Windows, if that format is done through Windows, then it becomes a NTFS disk. Then it becomes a NTFS disk. NTFS disk. Now, if, if that disk is formatted through Linux and Unix, so if that disk is formatted through Linux or Unix, it becomes NFS. NFS. It becomes NFS. So it becomes NFS. So for for all uh, track six, I think this might be a new information. So please, um, I'm going to go slow on this. And uh, actually, I've been, I've been through this, but not in huge big details in Windows. So one more time. Guys, all the disks start from a simple disk. All the storage starts from a simple disk. And then to start with each disk is a raw disk. You must format it. If this disk is formatted by Windows, it becomes a NTFS disk. If this disk is formatted by Linux and Unix, it becomes NFS. Guys, if the same disk is formatted by vSphere, vSphere ESXi host, then it becomes VMFS. Guys, do we see one common similarity in all of them? All of them are FS. So this is FS file system. This is also FS file system. And this is also FS file system. Basically, all types of operating system install a file system on a disk. This is called formatting. So if somebody asks you, what is formatting a disk? Guys, formatting a disk is just that you are installing a file system on this. And file systems are different from different operating systems. If it is a Windows, then the file system will be NTFS. And the most latest one? REFS. Guys, the most latest one is REFS, and that is also Windows. And REFS stands for Resilient File System. This is Resilient File System. Guys, this is an interview question nowadays being asked. They are asking that with Server 2012, which type of file system you can have? Yes, you can have older file system too. But now you have a newer file system, which is REFS. So what is the main function of a file system? It actually formates the disk. Now, we do understand what is formatting a disk. Formatting a disk is just this. So this is your disk here. This is your disk. And, and <coughs> so guys here, uh, let's say a SATA, SATA disk drive. So SATA disk drive. Now SATA disk drive, guys, these all disks, so the most current disk, if you're not using SSD, you are using SATA drive. So these are SATA drives actually, here. So this is a SATA drive. Now SATA drive is from inside, it is like this. So here, I think this might be a clear picture. I just wanted to show you. This one. So look at this. This is known as a SATA drive. Guys, SATA drive, as you can see, this is there are three metallic plates, one, two, and three. Now to start with these, all plates are raw. 
you cannot write anything on them and and you see this is a head here this is a head and there is a head underneath this plate then there is another head then underneath so there are six heads on three plates so these heads they move just like the 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 very old record system then people used to the the, 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 the gramophone uh, so so it's exactly like this this is a mechanical these are mechanical arm and this is a mechanical this is not electronic it's mechanical what is different between electronic and mechanical mechanical have machinery that moves that you are dependent on that machinery whereas electronic is um, all on a chip like a ram it's all on a chip so guys here your sara drives become slower this is why all of us most of us has uh, ssds in our machines most of us have <laughs> ssd in our machine anybody using internet no so uh, so uh, guys most of us have ssd in our machine now the problem the big problem is the big problem is if this is a sara drive guys sara drive has to move a lot here within this complete disk and then it becomes very slow very slow when you when you create three vms in the same machine guys if you don't create vms in the machine then the sara drive are fine they they don't they're not slow they're fast actually actually their speed is 7200 rpm 7200 rpm is huge speed uh, but when it comes to our labs because we have heavy lab we we run four servers inside so these head these head become slower so these heads are not enough um, what we do instead guys what we do instead so 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 here this is my raw disk this is my raw disk here and the raw disk has head has a plate a metallic plate and the me metallic plate has head so this is our head that is reading so we were talking about a format what is formatting we don't need to understand this this depth of a disk but since we are system admin with lot of, lot of years of experience we must understand what is formatting guys formatting is just like uh, uh, cultivating a land hal chalana remember we had so so when you when you when you uh, cultivate a land they need to run lines and then they put in the the, the stuff this right exactly in the same manner or it's exactly like the difference between these two pages <coughs> blank page formatted page what is the importance of formatted page because then you can write straight straight here you you might not be able to write that that's the only difference now in here what happens is as soon as the disk is formatted now formatted can be done through what formatted are done based on what they are done based on operating systems so formatted can be done through windows formatted can be done from linux formatted can be done from in vsphere vsphere so this can now all types of formatted does exactly the same thing they are all making first of all tracks so they all make tracks these are called tracks so this is known as a track and all of them make sectors so first tracks are made and then they further divide them into this and that is known as sectors guys all of the formatting are same then what is different then what is different here guys you have tracks and then you have sectors and then and then here right at zero track right at track zero so all tracks start from track zero right at zero track you have mbr or gpt information yeah. mbr or gpt so basically see right here you have mbr sitting here and mbr stands for master, master boot, boot record it's a master boot record now master boot record let's say your disk has a has, your disk has a has a lot of info, important information guys is data important for IT industry? Yes, yes, sir. Data is important for IT industry. Yes. Data yes. is important for IT industry because it's all about data. It's all about data that we do see clouds, Kobab. That we do see clouds. We do see virtualization. We do see VMware. We do see uh, Citrix. We do see Exchange. This is all about protecting this data. Let's say this disk is this disk is let's say uh, two terabytes in size. 
and something happened with uh, with with MBR. Something happened, guys. Something happened with MBR, meaning your disk lost all its memory. <coughs> so if something wrong with the boot record with, with with the track zero, it means that the disk now disk is not readable. You must fix the boot record or reformat it. If you reformat it, everything is gone. You cannot recover anything. But then there are few techniques there where you can uh, uh, fix the MBR. Guys, long, long time back, we used to have this issue of, uh, of uh, MBR being corrupt. But nowadays, it's not an issue because it is more stable now. It is more stable now. And, and if MBR is... So, this is called formatting. Now, your question is... Your question is that if I am saying that whenever a disk is formatted by Windows, by Linux, by vSphere, they, do, they are doing exactly the same thing, then why is it different? Why is it different? So before answering this question, I'm going to say that these are all different. Meaning, if you create a file in here, if you create a guys, nobody uses internet, please, because this is a very important concept. When you use internet, it is not only disturbing you, but it's distracting others. So please, 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 do not have that uh, 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 noise pollution. How many are you using internet? No. Yes. Yes, SSD, I'm going to come, uh, I'm going to show you what is the difference. Uh, so I'll just hold that question for a second, guys. My question was, uh, my question, what was my question? Yes, my question was... Uh, who is using internet? Yes, you have a very short memory. Uh, what, what was before that? Okay. If we are using vSphere and Linux and... Different file system. What is the difference between different file system? Uh, were you ever with Gajni? <laughs> short file system. Who is using? <laughs> so you just remember the most recent thing. Okay. Here we uh, a disk, raw disk, guys, all of them are making tracks, all of them are making sector. Now the big question is, what is the difference between these operating systems? Guys, the difference between these operating systems, and I am saying the difference is that if you create any file here, this file as is cannot be used in Linux. This file as is cannot be used here. If you use any file here, this file as is, if you copy this file and take it to from Linux to Windows, it won't work because this file system won't understand this file system. Guys, the most important thing about a file system, the most important thing about a file system, how files are being stored and how permissions are applied to those files. So yes, sectors are same, tracks are same, but the, what is different is file read, file read and write and assigning permission is totally different in all three of them. So file read and write, file, read and write, and also file folder permissions. File folder permission are different in all of them. Now, why is file folder permission different in all of them, guys? Because, uh, because I mean, I would, I would think, yes, logically, because uh, they were all competitors to start with. So they didn't share their code of operating system with them. They, they never shared their code of information with them. Because guys, if, if Windows starts sharing their codes with other people, then, then there is no point in licensing, getting licensed just for Windows. So Linux and Unix, they are separate companies. They are, so they made their own file system. And guys, since they made their own file systems, some file systems are very, very fast and some file systems are slow. This is basically that what is the quality of your file system? So just a difference between a Chinese or Japanese product. Nowadays they're same, but, but then Chinese are better than Japanese. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just saying that when, so all the file systems are different. Now what makes them different? So they all create tracks, they all create sectors, they are formatted exactly in the same manner. But the difference is how they store file and how permissions are set. Yes. Uh, speed uh, file permission. Yeah, why not? Why not? No, 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 no. Okay, so no, no, no relationship. No relationship. 
there is no relationship between a speed and a and because speed is mostly related to the hardware of a desk and permission is how permissions are permissions are set up okay so going back here now guys let's see a big difference between a uh, sata drive and a uh, ssd so this is a sata drive we know that sata drives are mechanical drives and the more load you have on a drive the slower it will be the more load the slower it is and more scattered slower it is so again so here remember this thing so if you have a sata drive if this disk is a sata drive yes it comes with 70 uh, 7200 rpm and then some disks are coming with 5600 rpm as well 5400 and 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 different speeds guy now here if it is a sata drive now the more storage is covered the slower it is the slower it is going to be so here i'm going to say more used it makes the disk slower and this is a very very important concept in uh, in order to understand disk issues or storage issues the more used slower it is and the the next very important thing is the more data is scattered slower it is it makes your data very slow so the data scattered scattered data scattered data it will make your disk slower now what is a scattered data scattered data yes one file piece is everywhere in your three plates so one file piece have, now why would it be everywhere in your three places Three because disk is not fragmented and free yes. space is everywhere. So, so guys, for that reason, it's very good. Bravo! Everybody understood the uh, function of fragmented data. And how to fix fragmented data? We run defrag. So sometimes we do need to run defrag, guys. Defrag is also run against databases as well. Defrag is also run against databases. Now remember the concept of da uh, defragment. Remember the concept of what? I can't hear everyone. Defragment. Because guys, Active Directory database is need. It, it is required to be defragged. If your the Active Directory database is not defragged, then Active Directory will be slow. And then. and then right after this training we're going to do inshallah uh, exchange training and in exchange the value of defragmentation is even higher so in exchange we do we make we we, we make the exchange database defrag all the time and actually exchange automatically uh, runs online maintenance that that that, that defrags this uh, this all system so for now if you at this point if you are able to understand what is defrag defrag is just a scattered data on a disk Okay. Fragmentation only happens in Windows. No, 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 no. Fragmentation happens in everywhere. Because fragmentation, guys, the question here is fragmentation happens only in Windows and not in Linux or this. No fragmentation happens. All of them. Uh, it's just that in some in some operating system it is less, and in other operating system it is more. Now fragmentation is not a software based thing. It is a disk based thing. It is a disk. Now. fragmentation is not even an issue in now ssd ssd you don't you don't have to worry about fragmentation cuz ssd is something like this let let's see ssd so this is your ssd drive now ssd drive is just this so it's just a set of chips inside It's just a set of. I mean, this is all RAM you're talking about now. This is all RAM, and in RAM, it does not have mechanical arms. It won't be slower. What what it needs? It just it just remembers numbers, and it just need to go to that place where the file is. So, in fact, it is said that never ever defrag a SSD, because that can that can disturb your uh, storage. So you should not defrag SSD because SSD doesn't need defragmentation. Um, So since you asked the question what is the difference between SSD and this SATA drives have mechanical arms whereas this uh, this is completely chip based okay that's why it's is faster yes
Again, one more time. Yeah, that is different. Exactly. Uh, so the way we format them is same. I mean, there are tracks and sectors in all of them. When they are formatted, the disk is formatted, they all follow the same strategy. They, there will be tracks, there will be sectors and all that. MBR is master boot record from where the disk starts, from where the disk starts. Now we're going to start ESXi storage concept. Mm -hmm. So they are making tools just to have for defragmentation. Never do that, yes. It did not destroy it because I, I did it a few times accidentally. Uh, uh, it doesn't destroy, but it, it will disturb your system. So it's just like a RAM, like you never defrag a RAM. You, you don't need to defrag a RAM. It is disabled, yes. Okay, I, I, I don't know. There is no in Mac. Maybe they might be doing it in the. Uh, no, maybe they might be doing it automatically. No, sir. In Mac, it's only erase and it just uh, gives you an option for a Mac journal or an X card. It's very simple. In so it says I defrag five. So it's I. I think this is for Mac. Not recommended. So maybe it might be doing it automatically in the background because SATA drives do need defragmentation, and and it's just a matter of how they are stored. Okay, guys, moving forward. So this all the storage starts from a simple. Simple. <laughs> Amir, this is just because of him, because he's doing it. <laughs> okay, take a bath. Okay, so guys, here let's start the storage concept. So storage on the disk starts from a simple, simple storage, simple disk, and then all storage from uh, start from a simple disk. And to start with each disk is a raw disk. So we need to now. I'm making a mind map for this. So each disk is a raw disk to start with. And then the disk is formatted. Disk is formatted, and based on the format, the disk will have a certain file system. Now, when the disk is formatted, if it is formatted through Windows, then it becomes uh, NTFS or REFS. <coughs> and then, if it is formatted from Linux or Unix, and it becomes NFS and NFS stands for network file system. So remember this. So this is network file system. And then if it is formatted with vSphere, ESXi, it will become a VMFS. VMFS. <coughs> Guys, when you burn a CD, when you burn a CD, there is a storage on this and that becomes a CDFS. So when we store data on CD, so CD, CDs have a file system that is known as CDFS, CDFS. Now these are different type of file systems on this. Now once the disk is formatted properly, once the disk is formatted properly, now you're ready to create files or folders. So right after this, you can create files and folders. So now I can create files and folders. So first of all, about any type of storage, we need to understand this concept. 
Okay. So we do understand this concept. Most of the time when you first time install an operating system here, the disk will be formatted and it, be, it will become now. So based on based on this quick discussion, let's say I install an operating system called 2008 R2 or 2012 R2. What will be the operating system? What will be the file system here? Yeah. NTFS by default it becomes NTFS. Now in NTFS the first disk. What is the name of the first disk in NTFS? The, well, what is the name of the first disk? C drive. C drive. So based on what operating system you have, they name it according to what the name is. So I once the disk is formatted in Linux, it becomes an FS, and here, what are they called in Linux? Hmm? What? No, root is the login. Root is the login, but in Linux and here, they are called volumes. Here, they are called volumes. In Windows, they are called disks, C drive, D drive, and those uh, in these disks. And here, they are called data stored. Remember, so here the disk is same disk. Remember the raw disk? It was a raw disk. It was formatted. In Windows, it will become a C drive or D drive. It becomes a D drive. In Linux, it becomes a volume. And in in, in ESXi host, it becomes a it becomes a data store. It becomes a data store here. So now based on this quick discussion, this is my operating system on this and the disk has what type of file uh, file system? NTFS. What is the disk called? C, C drive. C and this is my ESXi. And as soon as ESXi is installed, what, what file system will be here? NFS. NFS. NFS guys. NFS. BMF. This is why I said VMFS. Operating system is ESXi, and ESXi has its own file system, and that is VMFS. What is one line we need to remember about VMFS? It is designed for large files. It is designed for large files. So guys, here a VMFS. VMFS. Do we understand this? So VMFS. Now VMFS. What is the disk called in VMFS? Data store. So by default, it is known as data store. And same goes for here, the operating system is ESXi, and what is the file system? VMFS, and then it is called a data store. Now let's say if I add a new disk to ESXi host. Let's say if I add a new disk. So I'm adding a new disk here. Can I install an NTFS on this disk? No. Can I, I'll come back to your question, can I install NTFS on this disk? Yeah. No. no, why? Because the operating system is vSphere ESXi. vSphere ESXi, you can only you can only install. It will be automatically formatted, and it will use VMFS. Now, so 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 this is how it is. Yes, question. So um, this VMFS file system is of the virtual machine, not the ESXi host, because host is the living. Hmm. Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, the operating system is for v, v, vSphere. Guys, the question here is very important. Since ESXi host is based on Linux operating system, since ESXi, everyone, since ESXi is based on Linux operating system, then why is it not NFS? Why is it not NFS? Because, guys, this is how ESXi wanted to manage their storage. I mean, ESXi... ESXi would have used would have used NFS, but then they designed a special storage to manage large files. Because here, uh, we, uh, ESXi is always managing large files. So guys, here, do we understand these concepts here? Again, one more time. So here, today we're starting with storage, and storage is a very important concept. And the first line we must remember that all store, storage is a key to virtualization. In other words, storage is a key to virtualization or cloud. Guys, all of these clouds, data is key to them. The more famous virtualization becomes, the more important storage will be. So storage will be very, very important, just like, just, just as it goes on. Why? 
because all these VMs, they, when you create a VM, guys, when you create a VM, it is automatically stored here in this data store, right? The VMs are stored in this data store. Do we know that the VMs are stored in this data store? Yes. Have we ever seen, how many of us have ever seen a VM sitting in data store? So raise your hand. Everyone, everyone has seen, today we have seen, the, seen it. Yeah. Where, 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 so why would, why would we went into the, what was the example why we went into the storage? To check the VMX file, excellent. Because we need to remember this, that all the VMs are by default stored where? So guys, this brings us to another concept in storage. So here, storage starts from a basic disk. To start with, all the disks are what? Raw disk. All the disks are? I can hear everyone, guys. It's a raw disk. And then it is formatted. If it is formatted with Windows, it becomes what? NDFS or REFS. What is REFS stand for? Resilient. Resilient file system. Resilient. If you don't know it, please say it so that you can remember. Resilient file system. REFS. Sorry? Oh, okay. Yes, NDFS is new technology file system. And REFS is resilient file system. Now, why is it called resilient? Because it is resilient to many type of issues. It automatically it is said to be more efficient, faster, uh, faster. I mean, this is said to be this is somewhat equal to a VMFS. It is somewhat equal to VMFS because it can it can work with large file better than NTFS. So this is what it is said. So NTFS new technology file system, REFS resilient file system. NFS is network file system, whereas VMFS virtual machine file system. Virtual machine file system. Now before before NF before NTFS it was FAT 32. Before FAT 32 there was FAT 16, and before that it was just FAT. And FAT stands for file allocation table. So it started with it started with it started with. A uh, FAT long, long time back. Then this file system was upgraded to FAT16. This uh, this uh, this file system was upgraded to FAT32. And nowadays, nowadays, if your USB, where, do, you, do you have a USB? Anybody have a USB? Anybody have a USB? Where is USB? Nobody has USB. I have it. I have it. No, it's not on your table. <laughs> USB USB. Yeah, it's on your table. Where is USB? Thank you. Thank you. USB guys, USB. USB nowadays, nowadays, if your USB is FAT32, which is sometime it is, which is sometime it is, guys, in that USB, you cannot store a file that is more than 4 GB. In this, if, if your USB, let's say it is the topmost latest USB, 64 gigs of USB, but it is formatted with FAT32. In this, you cannot store file larger than uh, four, uh, four gigs. Four gigs. This is why sometimes when you try to copy in USB, it says that file name is too, too large. Now, that is too large because your, your file system is older. I'm just giving you an example. If a file system is older, then it does not have the newest features. So in order to fix this, all you need to do, just format this with NTFS. NTFS can, can read and write and store more than 4 GBs. So this is this is the importance of file system. Thank you. OK. Yes. So here it is called C drive. It is called C drive here. And in, in Linux, Unix, these are called volumes. And whereas in VMFS, they're called data stores. Can we format it when it's not with uh, audience, like this? Yes, yes, why not? Yes, yes, try it on your C drive. <laughs> on your C drive. No, yes, why not? You just go right here and right click on this C drive and format. Uh huh. I cannot shoot on my foot because this is my C drive. Um, can I can I format the the most important drive of my computer, which is D drive? Yes, and there you go. Live guys, I'm gonna destroy my. So here I can I can I, no 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 no. Click start. This D drive has everything. 
Huh? Unch oh yeah that can that that can protect my drive. There you go. And no way. No way. Okay guys, yeah, do we understand these concepts? I mean these concepts are very, very basic concepts. And now I'm gonna start with storage concept. This is this is also very important, guys. This is where this is actually this is what shows that how much experience you have in this field. So remember guys, do not take these, these mind maps lighter because this is very, very important. This quick story tells that you, you, you have been in IT for a long, long time. So here, broad desk, format, different operating system and operating systems. And I would highly, highly recommend that if you can start using mind maps, I mind maps. One of the guys from track uh, five, five he, he made mind maps and it, it made, it made DHCP very simple. Because DHCP and everything is attached everywhere, uh, DNS, so all those. So if you can all make for yourself, guys, it is it is excellent. So start using mind map, and this is a very small mind map to understand this here. Okay, so now let's start with the ESXi vSphere, guys. In vSphere, in vSphere, everything is stored here. Now let's look at this first. This is a VM that I created, and the VM is stored where? In a data store. So this is a data store? It's a, it's a data store. So here it is stored in a data store. Guys, now the second difference that we must understand as a virtualization admins, that in here, in Windows machine, in Windows machine, when data is being copied here, so whatever, whatever files you create on C drive, let's say, we all have resumes on our, our C drive and our in our host. Yeah. Do we have our resumes ready? Yes. Yeah, no? Yes. You don't have resumes? Kameen asked you many times to send your resume. You never sent your resume? So you do have a resume? No? No? Why? So send an email, please. Okay, guys, here. Let, let, let's look at this. Let's look at this here. So when the data when the data is stored when the data is stored here, guys, this is all stored using a technology called IDE controllers. IDE controllers. So they are so in in the disk the disk is connected to the main board using IDE controllers. So before setup, they had IDE. It was IDE, then it was upgraded to IDE two. And then SATA technology. Sorry? And so on. Okay. And then in SSD? It started with 6. It started with 6. Point, yes. So, guys, here. Uh, now, when the files are stored in the disk, when the files are stored, now let's say your disk is formatted. Your disk is formatted. Your disk is what? Formatted. formatted. Your disk is formatted. Yeah. This is for me. I can see your see your uh, what you're doing in in your glasses. <laughs> Ta -da. What is it? Way we thing. Okay. But I I do see an image in your glasses. What is that image? Is that what you say? We swear blue so soft connector. Blue helix. Okay, here. No, no, I do it. Here. IDE controller. Guys, now remember this. In Windows, it uses IDE controller or SATA controllers to store data from the computer to a disk. Guys, in ESXi host, in ESXi host, in order to store data in this data store, in the data store, it uses a iSCSI controller. iSCSI controller. And iSCSI controllers are faster than IDE or SATA controllers. One more time, when you create a new VM and that VM is stored in the data store, it this data store and when, when this VM starts, it definitely this VM needs to be talking to the host to, to show you the VM. So when it connects to the host, this line between the VM and the storage is known as iSCSI controller. And in Windows, IDE Yes, in, in Windows, it just use IDE or SATA controllers, whereas in ESXi host, the disk is being the disk is being accessed through iSCSI controllers. Guys, iSCSI controllers are are said to be faster than SATA or IDE controllers. Now that's the reason, cause cause why? 
EFXI, EFXI will be dealing with huge big files here because your VM file, disk file is huge. If the, your VM1 file might be 300, uh, 300 gigs, right? This might be 300 gigs. Now, if this is 300 gigs, there has to be a fast road just like a motorway, so it's a, it's a better road. So this road between the VM and the, and the data is known as iSCSI controller. So from now on, just remember this one thing. In ESXi host, all VMs are being read and written using iSCSI, con iSCSI controller. And now I'm going to show you that controller. So one more time, one more time. If, if we create a file in Windows, if we create a file in Windows, so this is, let's say this is my C drive, and in C drive you create a file called file1. Now this file that you just created, it must be stored in the disk. Once it is stored in the disk, it is being written using a technology called IDE or SARA, SARA controller. So it uses its own technology. Whereas, whereas when the files are created inside data store in ESXi, so this is ESXi, and in ESXi you do have a disk, and then when you create a new VM, so when you create a new VM, VM is a collection of what? Files. Files. All VMs are collection of files because you create a VM and automatically some file. What are the two most important files of a VM? VMX file and VMDK file. That's the disk file, that's the configuration file. Guys, when these files are created, basically they are stored using a technology called iSCSI. iSCSI controller. This, this word is known as iSCSI controller. Now iSCSI controllers are faster controller for read and write. So read and write, they are faster than normal IDE controller. iSCSI is not a new technology. It was, it was introduced long, long time back, but now it is automatically used in ESXi host, yes. REFS is used uh, is used in Windows. Uh, you know this one. This uses IDE. Uh, actually, SARA. It uses SARA. So IDE is older technology. Newer is SARA. So they use SARA drive. SARA. Uh, they can use when we configure them. If you don't configure them, they 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 they, they also use SARA. Yes. But yes, you're right, when you have a shared storage, then we use iSCSI controllers, okay? Now, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this, and you all should know, you all should be aware of this, that in ESXi host, in ESXi host, all this is stored, is, is used by iSCSI controller. Let's look at it now. So, guys, I want you to log in. I want you to log into your ESXi environment. And since now we are working in storage, so we must select the host and go to manage and select storage. So here we must select the host and manage and storage. Before we were working in networking, now we are working in storage. So once you go inside a storage and inside a storage it's loading and first the very first thing it says that it is, it is what is your storage adopter? And right here it is saying it's a SCSI adopter. So right here in the storage, automatically it says it's using a SCSI adopter. So, it's using SCSI adopter. And why is it using this adopter? To get, to get access to the storage devices. So once you go to the storage device right here, once you go to a storage device right under a storage adopter, it shows you these are storage, these are disks that are attached to your, your machine. So now let me expand this here. Guys, as you can see, this is very easy to read and, and work with. So all you need to do, where you are, what are you trying to find out? So look at this one more time. So let's say you are in your vCenter. And now I need to get more information about the storage of ESXi host and you will be going in there many many times in real environment because storage is very important place so all you need to do is you must connect go to the host and then within the host you need to go you need to go to manage and storage manage and storage and the two things you are interested in number one storage adopter 
what type of adopter it is using and second one what type of device what type of uh, disks are there so in 50 since last time we added an extra disk since we added that extra disk so i can see two disks here these are the two disks and this is cd this is a cd that is added to uh, that, that it has now the first two disks are ssd why are they ssd because they are taken they are taken from our ssd so in all your case if this disk is showing ssd here it means that it is being taken from your ssd if it is not ssd maybe it is taken from your other sata drive so it's your sata drive so two things that we need to look at storage adopter and number two storage devices now let's go to our legacy client guys let's go to legacy client within legacy client where do i need to go to you need to go to the host then you need to go to configuration and then you need to go to now in legacy client guys the two things are separately in two different places so there is storage and storage adopter this is why web client is much much better because every each related thing is in one place so in here you have everything a mixture so here first of all let's go to storage adopter now storage adopter again it says that you are using a, a, a SCSI drive so this is basically saying the connection between the server and the disk is SCSI controller. It's the SCSI controller between them. So whatever you are going to make inside the CSXI host, it will be using SCSI and then it, it will be connected. So here just one connection, it is not iSCSI, it's just a SCSI. It's the same thing. It is the same thing, but iSCSI is used externally, but this is, it is iSCSI as well. But since it is written, it's SCSI, so just write it as SCSI, guys, SCSI. There is no difference between, I mean, they, they're both the same technology. So now, one place that I'm looking at is storage adopter. And second place I'm looking at is the storage. Now here, it shows me that it has one disk and one CD. It has one disk and one CD. Okay, it's right here. So there are there are actually two disks and one CD. Yes. Right here. So VM HPA zero, VM HPA thirty two bit. So basically, both are controllers. Both are controllers. Uh, uh, ESXi use them. I think they're, they're automatically used, but one of them is used. I think it's zero. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, it's okay. It's right here. So if you select v, VM HBA32, it shows you that it is this adopter is for CD access. And if you select VM HBA1, this is for disk access. So this is how you know. So this adopter is for your disk access and this adopter is for your CD access and there is nothing used with this adopter. Okay, so now here. So now guys, based on this information, based on this information, let's quickly review what we are looking at here. So we are looking at ESXi host and within ESXi host, we are working with ESXi hosts. In ESXi hosts, this are formatted with VMFS and they are used they are uh, used by a controller. So the controller that is used is known as SCSI. SCSI. No, it is S S S S No, it is SCSI. It is SCSI. Okay. Okay, one minute. Silence. Silence. <laughs> okay, yes, why not? Sure. Um, Everyone is active, mashallah. Actually, at that day you were sitting in the back. Nobody does aho. Aho, aho. We can say aho. Guys, we do need that energy boost. We do need that energy boost. When you're tired, when you'll be when you'll be facing hundreds of failures, guys. Nothing should stop you. Nothing. You just keep on saying you failed, but you keep on saying I I am making hundred dollar an hour. I am making hundred dollar an hour. Your people people would come to you and say you can make it. 
look at you that kind of a person can make hundred dollars I am making hundred dollars and now you just keep on saying that you'll be there inshallah you'll be there you'll see yourself there you see yourself there the only thing is you need to have that faith you need to have that discipline you need to have that unity unity so we'll work all we'll work together guys we'll work together guys we'll work together as long as you're honest to yourself nobody can stop you nobody can stop you inshallah as long as you're honest honest means all labs should be done all uh, all okay how much how much do you have to prepare how much do you have to prepare for these interviews very simple look at this look at this here look at this guys it, it's so it's it's so innocent it's so sweet and just look at this thing here where is that thing where is that thing it's right here guys all you need to do is remember just this <laughs> it is just this here so all you need to remember about VMware this stuff Citrix this stuff SCCM this stuff exchange this stuff active directory this stuff and on top of this all you need to remember is these red options and if you if you want uh, there is the your seniors sitting here they're going to be presenting these red very important parts uh, on Wednesday on Wednesday, on Wednesday. So, huh? Which channel? <laughs> so, guys, please start. Uh, are you are you preparing this? Inshallah, yes. Yes, we are working on it. Huh? We are working. We are working on it. So here you need to prepare migration. You need to prepare upgradation. You need to prepare migrations and upgradations, guys. Together we can do it. Can we do it together, guys? Yes, and we can say aho. So can we do it together, guys? Aho, we can do it. Aho in Punjabi as well. Aho, that that aho. Okay. Ah, uh, they are presenting next Wednesday. That. <laughs> what is it? Two students. Yes. Track six. Track six. Yes, many be laptop is not Okay. Please.
No, 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 just sad. Okay, guys, here, everyone, 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 just, just few more things, guys. Storage overall. Everyone, storage. Can you keep it? 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 Can you <laughs> okay guys here everyone 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 uh, just few more minutes guys just few more minutes just few more minutes देखिए क्या शुरू किया आपने इतना अच्छा चल रहे थे यार ड्राइव हो रहे थे कहां से किधर ले गए आप बात मैंने किया मैंने किया ओके ये खड़े हो गए अदब ने रेस में वो देखिए कितना सर उनको तो बस बरस की हवा वापस आ गए आज है मेरे भाई आज एक फाइल ले लो यार थोड़ा सा टाइम डाल के सर इनको सारे काम अपनी क्लास में लगा नहीं 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 कह रहे थे ग्रोसरी भी करो बहुत जरूरी काम कर रहे हैं ओके गाइस हियर ले 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 किसी से ले ले फाइल ओके जस्ट जस्ट लास्ट 15 मिनट्स एंड दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट 15 मिनट्स अबाउट स्टोरेज सो गाइस इन इन स्टोरेज ऑल द स्टोरेज now I'm gonna since we do know the basics, everyone, everyone, since we do know the basics. Do we know the basics? Yes. We do know the basics, everyone. Now since we do know the basics, then all the disks start from a raw disk. All the disks start from a raw disk, and all disks are formatted by different operating system. When they are formatted from different operating system, they are named differently, they store differently. Now at the moment we are only at the moment we are only concerned with uh, VMFS, because this is VMFS that we are concerned with. Everyone, 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 calling all time. Okay. Uh, storage. Now, storage, all of the storage, they are all types of storages are of two types. All of the storages are of two types. And those are number one. Thank you. So, there are two types of storage. Number one, file level storage. And second one, log level storage. Guys, keep in mind that at this time, I'm only talking about VMFS storage. So since our goal is to bring a disk that is faster, that is stronger, on which we store the very important, very important VMs. Now let's think of this one more time. Why are we learning this? Because there are some VMs sitting here where 5,000 users are dependent on them. 5,000 users. For that reason, we want to store this VM at a place that is more protected, that is much faster, and that can be restored in case of a disaster. Right? So we are talking about this VM. So we won't be, we won't be saving this VM inside a local storage. We must bring a shared storage. Now, when we talk about shared storage, so this is where this all story is going. Guys, since we do understand that we are trying to protect what? We are trying, we are trying to protect yes. the VM, the VM where 5,000 users are connected. And this VM must be protected. And this VM should not be stored in the local storage. This is known as a local storage. Outside now, yes, it must be, it must be stored outside. Now, why is it stored outside? And the leap. Why should it be stored outside? Because by shared storage is a requirement for vMotion. Your vMotion won't work if this VM is not sitting here. So later on, we're going to add a shared storage and then move this VM out in this. Because if you don't have a shared storage, vMotion will not work. If vMotion doesn't work, DRS will not work. And if DRS doesn't work, SDRS will not work. 
and then if V motion is not there, HA will not work, and FK will not work, and BUM will not work. So all advanced features are attached with the storage. So for that reason, guys, we must bring a storage. We must bring a storage that is not only very, very active, very, very secure. It should be very, very fast, no internet usage. So it must be all three. It must be with all three qualities here. So all the storages are of uh, how many types? Two types. File level storage and and block level storage. Guys, file level storages are of two types. File level storages are of two types. What are the two types? Yeah. Block level? No. Oh, block level. Dash and NAS. Dash and NAS. Satya NAS. No, yes. not that. that. <laughs> uh, dash and NAS. Dash stands for direct attached storage. So this is known as direct. Guys, 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 everyone. And network attached. Storage. Direct attached storage. And the next one is. It is network attached storage. Direct attached storage and network attached storage. Direct attached storage and network attached. Again, going back, we are talking about this shared storage guy. We want to move our very important move, uh, very important VM out of here and store somewhere else. Out of here, store somewhere else. This is exactly like, this is exactly like sometimes we take our valuables from our house and store where? Bank in banks and lockers. Why? Because if, uh, if something happens here, yeah. then at least your valuables are stored. So for the same reason, guys, we must have a shared storage. Now, in order to bring a shared storage, we have four options. And among four options, these are the two options. So first of all, there is a storage can be of major two types, file level storage and a block level storage. And file level storage is of two types, direct attached storage and network attached storage. Guys, the, the, the closest example to direct attached storage is a USB, a USB stick. So you bring a USB stick, you bring a USB stick right here. So USB, it is a storage. And as soon as you, be, as you uh, what's happening in your machines? What's happening in your machine? No, it's not. Please, please, please. Yeah. Here, just last few minutes. Last sir, few minutes. Sir, sir, last week, sir, in Tino, no. sir, things are not going over. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yes. I mind map. I mind map. Okay, please. She wanted to file, so I was trying to give. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I think it should. Please. Here. Okay. Here, guys. Here, 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 here. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Direct attached storage is very simple to understand. Direct attached storage, direct attached storage, it is directly attached to our storage. Meaning in direct attached storage, the problem is if, the, if this disk is connected to this computer, it cannot be used by other computers. So if this disk is attached to this ESXi host, this ESXi host cannot access it unless you share it. But in direct, direct attached storage, but it is still an example of external storage. Since we are learning that how, how can we save this valuable VM outside, so the very first cheapest example is a direct attached storage. So direct attached storage can be a USB, it can be a USB, or it can be an external drive. It can be external drive. External drive, but in all cases, guys, in all cases, you have computers you have ESXi host and ESXi host, although they are connected to the network, but in direct attached storage, you connect a disk to one computer at a time. But still, since it is external storage, since it is external storage, I can still create a VM and store it inside here. So outside the ESXi host, this is one. Second one is network attached storage. It automatically defines itself. What is a network attached? Network attached storage, instead of this being attached to a each each system, basically now it is stored, now it is connected to the network, like a NAS device, like NAS device. Um, now NAS devices, most of the time, most of nowadays, NAS devices are being used at home for media centers. So NAS, so NAS device. 
if you go here, now these are NAS devices, guys. These are NAS devices. Let's say this is this is a NAS device. As you can see, NAS devices has a di display of its own, and they have disks here. All you need to do, they in, in the back, they are connected with RJ45 cable, and from RJ45, you connect it to the network. Now, here is your NAS device with three disks connected. Again, it is a type of external storage. In NAS devices, in NAS devices, again, this is, but now, this is a better storage than direct address storage because now it is available on the network. So other servers can also connect to it. So it is, again, it is, it is the second option, next NAS storage devices. Can anybody tell me that why is it being used in, uh, in homes for media centers nowadays? For gaming and for storing movies, for storing family pictures and all that. So many people nowadays they buy these devices, they connect it in, in your uh, uh, with one of the computer and they store everything in these NAS devices. So that from that one device you can connect your TV and everything, and you can you can you can uh, store everything in one place. Um, now here NAS devices can also be used because you want to store your valuable VM outside the. Uh, the VM. Now, here, guys, so storage is of file storage and block level, block storage, level storage. storage. File level storage is of two types, DAS and NAS. Yes. Guys, block level storage is of one type and that is known as SAN. SAN. So here, network attached storage. This is direct attached storage. And SAN is storage, storage area network. network. This is known as storage area network. This is more expensive as well. It is a storage area network, yes, and storage area network is of two types, storage area network. So first of all, the block level storage only comes in SAN. Block level storage is not coming in these devices. But nowadays, SAN also are providing block level storage. SAN, so SAN is getting uh, advanced and advanced, you can find block, but mostly block level storage is only available in SAN. And in SAN, these are of two types. That is ISPC and uh, FCT. Sorry? FCT. No, no. ISCSI, ISCSI, and, and the second Fiber one channel. is FC. Fiber Channel SAN. So Fiber Channel SAN or ISCSI SAN. Fiber Channel SAN, ISCSI SAN. As soon as I'm, 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 I'm finishing the lect lecture, you're, you're going to be banished from here. You can do that uh, at the end of the lecture. No, no you're doing mind map. <laughs> here. So here, guys, ISCSI, ISCSI and FC. ISCSI and FC. So ISCSI is a, is a type of block level SAN. So block level SAN is of two types, which is SAN, ISCSI and FC. FC stand for fiber channel. Fiber channel. Fiber channel. Whereas ISCSI stand for internet small internet system interface. Small computer computer system interface. System interface. So, so guys, storages overall are of two types: file level storage and block level, level storage. storage. And mm -hmm. and the file level storage is out of two types, which is DAS and NAS. Mm -hmm. And DAS stands for direct attached storage. We can remember it every day: direct attached storage, which is directly attached to your computer. Whereas NAS is network attached storage. It's just an example of uh, extra storage that is attached to your network, and you can access it from anywhere. So this is an example of NAS here. So you do have NAS device connected. This is a NAS appliance connected here. So NAS is connected and through LAN, all these servers and everything is connecting to this, this storage. So this NAS device, this can have many disks inside and then you can connect it. It can be a server as well, but mostly, most of the time, it is a NAS device. It is a special device that has disks inside that has an operating system of its own inside. But you can create one server, add 10 disks to it, and it becomes a NAS device as well. So this ISCSI storage and 
What? 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 I study storage and study adopter. They're the same thing. They're the same thing, but it has its own infrastructure. Okay, so before ending everything, Umar. Before ending everything, Umar. Before ending everything, let's quickly revise this, guys. Here. Uh, storage is of two types, file level storage and block level, level storage. storage. File level storage is of DAS and NAS, and then block level storage is of SAN, one type, and then SAN is of two types, iSCSI and Fiber Channel. Now guys, before leaving, I just want to give you a few pointers here between file level storage and block level storage. Guys, block level storage is faster, so this is faster, and this is slower. Slower. Next one. Reliable. This is more reliable. This is less reliable for typical This is data. reliable, most reliable, and this is less reliable for critical data. And this is expensive. Inexpensive. And this is cheaper than SAN. It is inexpensive. And that is good for. Uh, critical data as well, the SAN. Yes. So guys, block level storage, so the most important thing to remember is block level storage is faster and here file level storage is slower. Uh, just a quick example that you can remember. Since it is a file level storage, since it is a file level storage, meaning if a file needs to be copied from here to here, this file will be copied. So you, you're copying the file from here to here and let's say during a copy, if the copy fails, it next time it will start with the, that file again. So it cannot understand if the file is completely copied or not. Whereas in block level storage, it is copying file in small blocks. So this one file will be divided into 100 blocks. And then one by one, it is copying all of the block. And if it fails in the middle, and if it restarts, it doesn't have to restart from the beginning. This is just one simple example. So here, mm -hmm. since it is a block level storage, each file when it is stored, it is stored in the shape of small blocks. And once it is copying, it is copying blocks from one place to another. Whereas in file level storage, it is stored as a full file. So once it needs to copy, a full file needs to be copied from SSD. So this is this is kind of SSD. Yes, this is kind of SSD and this is kind of data drive. So file level storages are slower because they follow a different technique, whereas block level storage is this. Guys, another big advantage of block level storage is deduplication of data. Deduplication of data. Deduplication of data. Dun dun. Okay. Pretty well. Okay, Okay, guys, we need to remember this. So we'll take a picture and we'll copy it there. Uh, so guys, what we need to do is, uh, we need to, where is the storage? It's a video eight and nine? Video eight. Video eight. Video eight? eight and nine. Yes. Open open file. File. Open file. yes, open. Guys, please complete open filer before the next lecture. So please complete open filer, everyone, everyone for track five and six, everyone guys, everyone please complete open filer. And that open filer is? Hello everyone, uh, in this video series I'm going to show you how to build a uh, game where we feel Okay, so everyone, everyone just look at the screen for a moment. You can, I'm betting it. Uh, <laughs> so guys, everyone, 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 just look at the screen at the moment, please, 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 everyone, everyone, everyone. Everyone so calling all cars. Okay, everyone, just 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 quick moment. Quick now, moment, everyone. Quick uh, moment. All you need to do is now, you need to complete video nine. Uh, you need to complete video uh, nine and VDS as well. This is working with VDS. And you don't need to do video ten. Video ten starts with V motion. So if you can do it before me, it's fine, excellent. But you must complete till video nine and VDS.
Sky 3DS and video lab. So please complete all videos in class lab and home lab. Okay, excellent guys. Thank you so much. And see you next week. Inshallah. For my VCF client to start with, and later on. That second server will be used for vCenter. And apart from this, I'm going to build ESXi host, uh, three ESXi hosts uh, uh, to be used within the vCenter. Now, so first of all, building a second server for future vCenter. So vCenter cannot, cannot be installed in the So this is the main controller is ready to have a game machine. Uh, what I'm going to do is